With Update 11 we've seen an old new set of vehicles hit the Hellatlus showrooms. The new half-tracks coming to each faction, fitted with thick armor plating, offer protection to whoever is inside and drive you and your crew across the map in a much safer fashion than the other trucks. But the fun doesn't stop there. These costly but flexible vehicles offer a brand new dynamic on the battlefield by also acting as mobile garrisons providing new opportunities in attacking and defending. As it's been a week since update 11 hit, I have not yet seen them utilized to their full potential, if at all. And so I thought it would be time to make a tutorial about them on the possibilities these trucks offer and how to implement them into your battle strategy. But first, I'm DGW and I want to welcome you or welcome you back to the channel. Remember to leave a like on the video and if you want to stay updated on anything hell at loose, remember to subscribe to the channel. If there's any questions or suggestions, just drop them down in the comments and I will make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Before heading into the strategic potential these trucks offer, let's first go through some of the basics. The half tracks can be used as armored personnel carriers, carrying up to 8 guys safely from point A to point B on a map. Unlike a normal transport truck, you cannot that easily get shot out of them, so they are a lot safer to implement. However, these trucks do come at a cost. 300 fuel is quite expensive, so use them wisely and don't waste them like very often the troop transport trucks are. But the fun stuff starts here. Instead of only transporting troops across the battlefield, they can also deploy spawn waves in the exact same way as a garrison, although there are a few key differences. First of all, unlike red zone garrisons, a half-track will not get overrun if an enemy is within 100 meters. And instead of a garrison's spawn wave of 40 seconds, the spawn wave on a half-track is 60 seconds. Unlike garrisons and trucks, they cannot be destroyed with one single rocket, you will need at least two to take them down. Although whoever is standing outside that truck will not be having their best day if that first rocket hits. Also, just like garrisons and OPs, they will light up if an enemy is within 50 meters, so the exact same radar function. So half-tracks offer the flexibility of OPs with the usability of garrisons, but also offering some protection while traveling over the battlefield. The entire team can spawn on them just like a garrison, but they can be moved around much more easily like OPs and do not require any resources except their first deployment, unlike garrisons that need 50 supplies in friendly territory or 100 in enemy territory. So now that we know what they can do, the question becomes how to do that. Nothing in Hell at Loose is set in stone, so each of these tactics that I want to discuss can be varied upon, combined or utilized differently. The first possibility they offer is what I want to call defensive backup. Obviously you will have a garrison at the stronghold you need to defend with one or two backup garrisons in that same sector or a backward sector. But as these need to be 200 meters apart, this leaves kind of a gap. So a half track could be parked somewhere in between those backup garrisons and the stronghold as an alternative to spawn on. Secondly, they can be used as a true backup because enemy units, a recon or just normal infantry can quite easily take out your garrisons but will have a much harder time taking out your half-tracks. So even if parked further away, if you lose your garrisons at a point you need to defend, the half-track can then always be moved closer to that stronghold that needs reinforcement. The good thing about these half-tracks is that they do not require resources on the ground to set up like a garrison, so they are instantly available and do not need a squad leader near to set that garrison up. A second strategy is what I would call a steamroll tactic. While you are attacking say the third sector on the battlefield, you can have somebody, just a single guy, drive a half-track all the way around the battle towards the fourth sector. Maybe using a support player would be the best choice because he can drop a crate of supplies already next to that half-track. Even though this half-track cannot be spawned upon, as soon as you do capture the third sector, the half-track does become available for spawn and if you make sure at least one squad leader and a support player go there and that support player drops his supplies, that squad leader can build a garrison in the red zone immediately. The half-track can then be moved closer to the stronghold you want to attack because it does not get overrun if enemies are within 100 meters. Most of the time red zone garrisons are built with supply drops which can be spotted by enemies and they kind of know what you're planning. The half-track therefore offers a much more stealthy way of doing this, with the benefit that it becomes available to spawn upon as soon as the third sector is capped. 
Whereas if you want to build a flanking garrison in the red zone, you will first need to get supplies there and a squad leader will actually need to travel there, taking much more time and exposing it to much more risk. The main reason for getting this line of attack up as soon as you can after attacking a sector successfully is because if you make sure you got pressure on the next point that the enemy holds, they cannot go on a full out attack on the point you just captured, giving your team more time to set up their basics, such as a garrison. This leads us to the third implementation of the half tracks general support of the attack, not instead of red zone garrisons, but in conjunction with them. As you will know, a red zone garrison gets overrun as soon as an enemy is within 100 meters. This means a red zone garrison should never be too close to the sector you want to cap, let alone the stronghold you want to cap. A red zone garrison that is overrun is completely useless. Now you might be thinking an OP can cover the gap between that red zone garrison and the sector slash stronghold you are attacking. And although that is true in some part, OPs can be taken down really easily by the enemy and are limited by the fact that only the squad that placed it can spawn upon it. First of all, the entire team can spawn upon the half track. Secondly, unlike an airhead that can be seen clearly falling from the sky, a half track can take a long route around the battle and come up behind the enemy without it being spotted. Thirdly, it can be placed in an angle of attack that cannot be used for a garrison because the map does not leave enough room to place that garrison and considering the 100 meter overrun status. And the final benefit it offers is that as soon as you capture that sector, it can be moved into the stronghold or very close by to function as a temporary garrison before an actual garrison gets built. However, there's one more little thing you can also do with a half track. Because garrisons can only be placed 200 meters apart, you can use the half track as a second garrison pretty much next to an existing garrison, say inside a stronghold or a certain area that you want to defend. Also, you cannot place garrisons in most of the buildings, but a half track can easily be driven inside it, offering it protection from spawn killing, giving the entire team more than one spawn option inside a stronghold. And I can already see a lot of engineers building barricades and bunkers around half-tracks protecting them from projectiles from afar, like what happens with many garrisons. Now again, these strategies are not set in stone and you can utilize whatever part of it that you need. Most of all, use your common sense. And for that, I've got a few general tips. First of all, these are not your personal transport vehicles. They are expensive to spawn in, so use them what they're made for. And because they are so expensive, make sure you don't just put it out in the open, but put them somewhere in cover, maybe inside a building or in between bushes, so it doesn't get spotted too easily. I would suggest always having one or more half-tracks at your HQ spawns, preferably not the one closest to the last sector that you need to defend. My reasoning behind this is, if you lose the garrison at that last sector or you don't have a garrison in the first place, the enemy attacking might not give you the option to get a garrison placed. With the closest HQ spawn possibly being overrun, one or more half-tracks might give you one final chance to get to the sector before it is lost. Furthermore, distributing a couple of half-tracks across the map that can be spawned upon by one single guy and then relocated to wherever they need it can give you quicker and more options in attack or defending situations, unlike garrisons that will always need supplies and a squad leader present. Because these mobile garrisons can be moved, you can allow one wave to spawn in move the half-track 50 or 100 meters and then allow another wave to spawn in. And as always, use your common sense. Don't place it where it is easily spotted and don't place it in the direct routes enemies would take to attack or defend whatever point on the map. As update 11 has changed a couple of things in the game, updated tutorials will be coming, so subscribe to the channel to stay updated on those, coming to my tutorial playlist shortly. And you can also watch me die, kill, explode and suck at hell at loose in my random gameplay videos. Remember to leave a like and all that remains is to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.